with me tonight now in studio, a guy with a rich legal background, great friend of the show, and mine, Senator Lindsey Graham. Welcome, Senator. Thank you. Things every time I see it, this is unprecedented. But it this is. is unprecedented. Yes. To think that a major, to a former president who could be a future president is going to be indicted sometime this week or next. Well, we open up Pandora's box because other county prosecutors, maybe on the Republican side, well, maybe I should do this to a Democratic official. We're allowing uh, liberal cities, liberal counties, to become a wrecking ball toward Trump. Anything. They can do, we can do. So I think it's going to jeopardize the presidency over time. So I do think this. So Donald Trump and his allies have launched, I think, a blistering offensive. Now, Jim Jordan calling in the DA to Washington, uh, I think that is significant. And it shows on the best defense is a great offense. Right. Here's what Jordan's saying and what he'll do. Cut nine. And we sent this letter to Mr. Bragg saying, we want to talk to you. We want to know what's going on here. We want to see the communications that have, that have taken place between the Federal Justice Department and your district attorney's office there in, in Manhattan. Because understand, Harris, first they went after President Trump on Russia. Then it was a phone call with Zelensky. Then they wanted his tax returns. Then they go after his business records. Then they go after his children. And now it's some misdemeanor alleged bookkeeping error that they're going to. And this is from the prosecutor who initially didn't want to do this. In fact, he had people resign because he wasn't going to do do this because no one else will bring this case. Well, I like that he's doing this, but will the DA go? Yeah, I doubt it, but I like what Jim is doing. He's trying to go on the offense and say, okay, this uh, New York prosecutor are you using any federal resources here. The implications for balance of power in this country are enormous, right? You have, you have the federal system, you have state systems. The prosecutor here in New York has downgraded over 50% of felonies to misdemeanors. But there's one guy in New York City that went the other way. It's Donald Trump. And the one thing people don't talk enough about is that the book that was written by a former prosecutor in the New York office saying we had Trump, you let him go, I think is driving this because the narrative of that book is that Trump was dead to rights and they gave in to the political pressure. This Mr. Bragg guy is can't stand that narrative, so he's up in his game. The book talked about this being the zombie case. Yes. The book said this case was dead. Well, it was And they dead. went back and they said that he inflated the worth of his property to get loans that he, by the way, he has paid back. This well, is a non-problem. Well, the bottom line is uh, Cyrus Vance, the old uh, DA here in Manhattan, said no thank you. The U.S. attorney for New York said no thank you. So now they bring this case back from the dead. They charge him with a misdemeanor and they add a felony, a minor felony, to get it back into the camp of a felony. Why? Because the statute of limitations for the false statement case is two years. That's been two years. They've created a legal cocktail to get jurisdiction to prosecute Donald Trump, and no one in the history of New York City has ever been prosecuted this way. So, so Senator, if you're Alvin Bragg right now, are you liking this attention, or are you saying to yourself, what did I do? Because Trump went on the offense on Sunday, Saturday and said, I'm coming, I'm going to be arrested on Tuesday, protest, and now the scrutiny, the news media, everyone coming around, and no one's saying this is a layup. Every, a lot of people are saying on other channels, I'm not too sure about this case. So why would you do this if you're Mr. Bragg? I think it's a political decision by him. He feels like he's carrying the torch for the left that he's the one that won't let Trump get away with everything he's done wrong. He's planting the flag, and he's going to be the hero of the left. I think that's playing out for him. But what he doesn't realize, the ramifications for the country writ large are very, very serious, compromising, I think, a balance of power between state, local officials, and the federal government. And this will backfire. President Trump will win this contest legally, and he will win this contest politically. But when you see, as Chris Christie brought up on Sunday, when you get fingerprinted and you get the mug shot, you might say it makes me stronger. And I saw what you said right away. Uh, you said this this guy has done help him get the nomination and maybe right. president again. But when you have those moments, yeah. and you might say it makes you more powerful, you you know the law. That's still humiliating, and you don't want That's, that out there at no, 76 I, years old. I don't want that for the presidency. I don't want that for— You know, nobody's above the law, including former presidents, but the law should never be used as a political weapon. 
I think here is being used as a political weapon. This case makes no legal sense given the what's going on in New York. It's been dead. They bring it back to life for a reason. It's a politically motivated, I think, effort to get Trump. And at the end of the day, uh, legally he will lose. I think the Supreme Court will shoot this down eventually. This is selective prosecution on steroids. Do you have any sense of the track, of the timing? So if he gets indicted this week, what kind of timing? Because we, we look at a guy that's running for the nomination. Yeah, I'm not the smartest lawyer in New York by any means, but there's so many things you could do to make this to difficult delay. for Mr. Bragg. You right. could go to federal court. I mean, the bottom line is if I were the Trump legal team, I would wear him out. Uh, I want you to hear this is just about this case in particular, because I know we got the Georgia case. You got the January 6th case. You got the Mar-a-Lago files. Um, and I know with the with the Georgia case, they they questioned you, but Robert Costello, re, for a blink of an eye, represented Michael Cohen. So he came forward and spoke to the grand jury, which I think is kind of interesting because you usually get people that just sing your song. Right. He was not singing that song. He says Michael Cohen has no credibility, and not just because he was convicted. Listen, cut seven. And I told them and told the grand jury today I was deputy chief of the criminal division of the U.S. attorneys for the Southern District. I said I wouldn't touch a witness like Michael Cohn for any amount of money. You simply yeah. cannot rely upon this guy. And tonight, he was on another station denying that he waived the attorney-client privilege. Here it is, in writing, yeah. and that's his signature on the second page. So that's unbelievable. I guess he didn't know that, and the district attorney didn't know that. And I told them, Michael Cohn has been in your office 20 times and twice in the grand jury. And he forgot to tell you that he waived the attorney-client privilege 22 times? I mean, really, is this the kind of witness yeah. you want to ride to the finish line? <laughs> it's just a joke. I mean, and I would feel the same way if it was Bill Clinton. I'd go, hey, sure. guys, the totally. Monica Lewinsky is embarrassing. Totally. Uh, we know it. Uh, but are we going to go convict him after because he might run again? Uh, it doesn't make any sense to me. Um, and in the big picture, I think it's very interesting to see how it's going to affect him because Nikki Haley's in single digits right now. I think she's incredibly qualified. You know her well. I do too. I think Tim Scott's going to be a formidable. He's talking Absolutely. broad strokes about our country. I think Mike Pompeo, CIA director, of congressman, who yep. was uh, uh, Secretary DeSantis, of State. Uh, great governor. Yeah. yeah so on I mean, and on and on. But when they're on stage, right. you ran for president. Yeah. It, this is a different crop. Totally. And when they're on stage, and now that Trump's a known quantity in 2023, what happens? Here's what I think. Uh, this case has taken all the air out of the Republican primary. Everybody running against Trump with a half a brain is having to defend Trump because what they're doing to him is basically dangerous and unfair. So every day that we go in the primary process, Trump's a victim to the left. Uh, it's a good day for Trump. So let's talk about Ukraine today. Vladimir Putin uh, and uh, President Xi had their day two of their mini summit over in Moscow. And the first day they just talked about how great each other's country is. Right. But when the cameras are off and the doors are closed, what do you think of substance is, is going on? I think they're setting up a move by China down the road here to provide lethal aid. So let's look at the war basically year on. We were told in D.C. by our military and the intelligence community, uh, Ukraine would be over in two weeks. Big miscalculation. I heard three days. Yeah, it was, they said four, but two weeks. Um, so they didn't know what they were talking about. Uh, with the right amount of weapons, the right type of weapons, they can evict uh, Russia from Ukraine. Biden's given them enough not to lose, but not enough to win. General Keene says that I agree. So uh, Putin's army is being dismantled by the Ukrainians. They're down to women prisoners. He's running out of weapons. Uh, the sanctions are beginning to hurt. So China doesn't have many friends. But they have a friend in Putin because his ambitions are similar to their ambitions. He wants to control his backyard. They want to control theirs, China, and, and probably go beyond. So I think Xi has made a decision that it's better for him to risk the wrath of helping Putin than let Putin go down. And he's going to provide lethal weapons as a last resort unless the Biden administration deters him. The thing is, he saw how united NATO was. He saw they were adding two more right. countries. He saw that the, the uh, Western Europe eventually it got off natural gas and oil from mm -hmm. Vladimir Putin, which everyone thought was going to be impossible, certainly, to convince. If the U.S. starts saying, putting through and through and so like we're doing with TikTok and start pulling our economic relationship apart, and European Union does it to any degree, 
What, why is it in China's interest to do that? Well, so what he's trying to do, uh, Xi, is stop the bleeding. The day that China provides weapons, this war changes. Right. Because the European Union is far more interested in doing business with China than, say, many of us in Congress. So Xi is making a play. He's going to stand up for Russia rather than be part of the demise of Putin because if Putin goes, he's been indicted, uh, excuse me, an arrest warrant by the ICC against Putin for war crimes in Ukraine. That's not a model that Xi wants to see become successful because he could be next because of his abuse in China. So I think he's going to stand up to Europe, stand up to the United States, and double or triple down on helping Putin because he sees if Putin goes down, that's sort of the a big end of his ambitions. So what, what the thing is he knows the economic risk. He knows he doesn't have the healthiest economy in the world. He knows that coming out slowly from this, does he really want that fracture? For example, Nike, Adidas, I pulled out a lot of their manufacturing. Apple is starting to make moves. They'll never get all out. I get it. But when you start doing that, what do we uh, hear today? Another major uh, firm is pulled out of China. It says it's just too risky. Well, That doesn't work for them. No, see, the guy's a dictator. He doesn't have to worry about the next election. So all these things you described are economic uh, upheaval in the short term. Here's his bet. I've got a billion people. People want to do business with me. This is a good market for the West. It's a win-win situation. He's going to believe, or I think he believes, that if he can keep Putin in power by China coming to his aid, that he's stronger in the eyes of the West, not weaker. When we come back, we're Republicans, why they're jumping off the Ukraine uh, bandwagon and what Ron DeSantis said and how it's playing uh, for his quest, perhaps, to become the nominee. Uh, don't move. You listen to The Brian Kill Me Show. Senator Lindsey Graham here for a little bit longer. Then we go inside business with Jerry Willis. Busy day. So glad you're here. There's always hope. And uh, <laughs> We've probably got a joke plan, which I think is terrible, but go ahead. <laughs> okay, my, my joke was <laughs> that I'm, He's I'm, my point. I'm thinking what everyone else is thinking, which is how could the two of us possibly come off good after this. Or either of us. Or either of us. Now, is that funny? No. No. Well, thanks for... Well, well anyway, that, I'm glad to be That's here. how you kill a joke. Well... <laughs> by saying... We, we have a joke that I don't think is funny, well, but let's try it. But, you know, anyway, okay. whatever. Okay, good I'm going to go in the Senate floor. I don't want to ruin his life. He up. was a good senator. <laughs> Uh, uh, Senator Al Franken, Senator Lindsey Graham last night, Al Franken filling in yeah. on The Daily Show, getting his week. So yeah, you had I enjoyed you like, it. Yeah, I, yeah, I've always liked Al. I thought he I thought he was a good senator. You know, he's liberal, but he took his job seriously. I always enjoyed getting along with him. You want to make a, a point about the European Union. Yeah, okay. So, so, if, so, so if China's in and they start giving lethal weapons saying, okay. screw you, world. So what this meeting is about, uh, so the ICC, the International Criminal Court, issued an arrest warrant for Putin. Now, that's a big deal. <clears throat> What's the crime? Stealing children from Ukraine, 16,000, and sending them to Russia. The last country to do that was Hitler. So the ICC believes there's enough evidence to arrest Putin for a war crime. So she comes the next week. It's in Xi's interest in his own mind for Putin to prevail and not be taken down. What can we do to deter what I think is the biggest game changer in Ukraine? Lethal support from China to Russia, providing Russia weapons they don't have yeah. to keep this war going. If the Biden administration designated Russia state-sponsored terrorism under U.S. law and China helped, they would run into U.S. sanctions. If the European Union would do the same thing, it would change the calculation for China. Without that, they're going to give them weapons. So they need to know this is the sanctions. What about just saying sanctions? These are the sanctions, Germany, Italy, uh, France, Portugal, Spain, England. These are the sanctions that are going to be going your way if you, in fact, give them lethal weapons totally. and extend this war. So now how do we do it under U.S. law? There are five countries that are state sponsor of terrorism, Iran, North Korea, Syria. I can't remember the other two. So what would happen if we made Russia state sponsor terrorism? Any nation or group that provided material support would run into U.S. sanctions. That, I think, would have the potential to deter China. You know, remember when Putin built up his forces around Ukraine? I was yelling pre-invasion sanctions up the cost. You were. Send weapons before the invasion so you make it harder. Neither one happened because the Biden administration didn't want to be provocative. 
They're doing the same thing, same mistake with China. you got a moment here where you can up the cost of Xi bailing out Putin, and we're not taking that moment uh, in stride or seriously. All right. How, how concerned are you about uh, Saudi Arabia and Iran? Very, because they're about 85 percent enrichment, uh, the Iranians. So Israel is not going to let them get to 90 percent because that – that's weapons-grade uh, enriched uh, uranium. So Saudi Arabia is doing something I quite don't understand. What? Now, this is a slap to Biden for sure. Right. They're trying to play nice with the largest state-sponsored terrorism on the planet. And that's it. Uh, so, Senator, we'll find out what happens to that relationship. It can't be. Uh, it's not based on solid ground. Senator Lindsey Graham, thanks so much. Thanks. Hi, everyone. I'm Brian Kilmeade. I want you to do me a favor. I want you to click to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page. This is the only way that I know for sure that you're not going to miss any great commentary, any great news bites, any great interviews coming your way on Fox. You can get it all here on YouTube. So subscribe right now.